Ah, uh, this is gonna be another desk video, isn't it? For the last few years, I've been dead set on eventually making the perfect desk setup. And one that only uses this, a USB type C cable to do everything. But why did I want to take this approach? And what did I end up with? <laughs> Let's talk about it. If you really think about it, USB type C is such a magical connector. It can power things that are plugged into it. It can be used to share images from your device to a display. You can use accessories with it. It can be flipped upside down and would still connect to your device and do what it's supposed to do. And it's usually a fast connector too. It's definitely in the S tier of PC connectors. Back in the stone ages, like 10 years ago, you'd be stuck needing three or four different types of cables to accomplish everything that this one single USB-C cable can do. And so with this magical connector, I wanted to create the ultimate do everything desk setup where I can just sit down, plug in any device I'm using and get to doing what I want to do. Saying that feels kind of like deja vu. That's because it is deja vu. I've tried accomplishing this in the past because I wanted a setup that suited productivity and YouTube work. But now the goal has changed. It's now for productivity, YouTube work, and a little bit of gaming, which has a completely different set of criteria. And at the same time, I want it to look good and fit in the space that I'm in, which is kind of a goal every single time I do this video. I promise this will be the last time this year. I'm kind of over doing desk videos after this one for a bit. Productivity and YouTube work requires a lot of desktop space, color consistent displays, lots of ports for accessories, and ergonomics like good office chairs and a standing desk, all to make life a little easier. While a gaming setup benefits more from high refresh rate monitors and low input lag peripherals. So this ends up being a major challenge because there's some conflicting needs here. If I say there was a primary focus, I would say this desk focuses primarily 75% on productivity and YouTube work with the Mac and 25% gaming on my ROG Ally. So let's start with the monitors. In a perfect world, you would want a do-it-all monitor. Retina quality with high PPI, high refresh rate for gaming, OLED for the deep colors, and ultra wide for the massive screen real estate. Today, that monitor doesn't exist. And if it ever did, it would probably cost a fortune. So instead, we'll use two monitors to get the best of both worlds. One really suited towards gaming and one really suited towards productivity and content creation. For gaming, I'm using a Samsung G85SB. This is a nice OLED 144Hz ultra wide monitor with USB-C making it perfect for the setup. Then I have a second 27 inch 4K monitor for our higher DPI productivity and YouTube focused setup that I'm running off of my Mac. And they're also today's sponsor, BenQ, and their MA series of monitors. These are 4K 60Hz IPS monitors with a focus on Mac users like me and probably you if you're watching this video. These these monitors come in 27 inch and 32 inch screen sizes. They have a USB type C cable that you can use to connect to your Mac, iPad, or Windows PC to the display, charge it, and use a device plugged into the USB ports on the back all at the same time. These monitors support 95% of the DCI P3 color gamut. They come with an adjustable stand, although I am using it on a VESA mount right now, and two additional HDMI ports for other devices. But the best part about the MA series of monitors and why it makes sense for this desk setup is that it has Display Pilot 2. This is a macOS app that gives you full control over this monitor. You know how on some monitors you have to press a little button and change the settings with a little joystick or button on the back? With Display Pilot 2, everything about the monitor is adjustable directly on your MacBook, like brightness and volume. With Display Pilot 2, I can also adjust brightness and volume directly on my MacBook's keyboard. I also like that if you do decide to use it sideways, the OSD rotates along with the display. So if you do have to make adjustments, it's easy to fiddle around with without craning your neck awkwardly. If you use many monitors, you know how difficult it is to make sure that the monitors are consistent across the board, which can be a pain to dial in and get perfect. BenQ's MA series of monitors come with MBook Color, which tunes the colors of the monitor to match pretty closely to your MacBook's display. Comparing it to my own MacBook, it's pretty hard to tell otherwise. So if you're interested in the BenQ MA series of monitors, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to BenQ for sponsoring this portion of the video. So since both monitors are USB Type-C, I can take anything I own that has a USB Type-C port, so my ROG Ally, my iPad, or my MacBook, and plug them into these monitors. I like keeping the BenQ monitor rotated at this portrait mode-like configuration, but whenever I want to watch something or change how I edit videos, 
I can just rotate it back to normal and have an entire display dedicated to it. Obviously, none of this would be possible without this desk that they all sit on. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know I am probably the biggest fan ever of standing desks because you can fine tune their height and dial in exactly to your perfect height for both standing or sitting. But it's also a nice little cheat code for shooting cool B-roll shots like this by placing the camera directly on the standing desk and making it go up and down. I abuse that shot a lot. But at the same time, cable management on most of them is terrible. I mean, where do you place the cables? But this Magnus Pro standing desk that Secret Lab sent over is, well, it's great. Not only are the motors quieter than all the other standing desks that I've owned, but it also has a feature that I really miss from my old IKEA desk from when I lived with my parents. A nice little area in the back for all those messy, nasty cables. So you can dump all your junk in that trunk. And Secret Lab even has a bunch of different cable management accessories that go nicely with it, and even monitor arms with hidden cable management. Since this desk is all metal, their accessories just magnetize directly onto it meaning I didn't have to drill any holes or mess with any sticky stuff this time. I think this desk cleans up your space pretty nicely, and the fact that you can swap out the top surface for different colored mats just means you get a ton more customization on it, even if you're the type to want the Akatsuki clouds in 2024. You do you, Boruto's dad fans. You do you. To be fair, I'm more the type to do DIY-like standing desks like I've done in the past, but the Magnus Pro is a great option if you want a desk that's just set it and forget it with built-in cable management. I spent so little time cable managing on this one. My biggest complaint about the Magnus Pro though is that there's not a ton of selection when it comes to different matte colors beyond sort of neutral colors. So that means we'll need to add some color back into this desk with some accessories like this tan leather Grove made desk mat so that the desk setup looks a little less gray. Now the desk is starting to look a lot less gray and fit in a lot better with the rest of the room. In my previous desk setups, I always ended up using a monitor riser of some kind. And I found one that I thought would bring a lot of warmth back into this gray setup. And then I remembered, oh yeah, we have some leftover oak shelves. I'll just turn these into a nice little desk riser. So now I have a nice little monitor riser that adds warmth. Then I can place my speakers on top of this riser. And on the right side, I'm using a Grove made MagSafe charging stand so that I can keep my phone in standby mode. Then I can slide my MacBook underneath to give myself some desk space back. The thing about M series MacBooks is that if you're using them with the lids closed, the mics no longer work. So instead I mounted a Rode Mic NTG shotgun mic that I had laying around for some cleaner audio. All right, since both of these monitors have USB Type-C ports for power, display, and for their built-in USB ports, I can now take any USB Type-C device I want, plug it in, and just start using this desk setup. And if the device, like my MacBook, has two USB-C ports, I can plug in both. So this way, if I wanna split it up, instead of just using both on one device, I can have my MacBook connected to the BenQ and the ROG Ally connected to the ultra-wide, or both to my MacBook. But the main benefit is that flexibility. When I'm focused on productivity or video editing, I use both monitors on my MacBook. This way I can just use the BenQ to keep messages, Apple Music, and Finder open and the items I'm looking at on the ultrawide. When I'm editing in Final Cut, I switch the BenQ into a file browser or rotate it back into landscape mode so that it can be used as a video preview. And then I leave the timeline on the ultra wide since it gives me a wider view of the overall project. When I decide to game, I just pick whichever monitor I feel suits that game perfectly, either high refresh rate or high resolution. If I'm already using my MacBook for a different task, I can also plug in my iPad for an almost computer-like setup. I think you've noticed by now that I'm not using both monitors at the same time for some devices. And that's because of how USB Type-C is implemented in each and every device. They're not all the same. Some are faster and the actual features you get on each device is different. It all depends on the cable and the type of USB-C port that's on the device that you're using. To make it more confusing, there's even Thunderbolt and USB 4 designation, which are different standards that all use the same port. So it does get annoying to figure out exactly what you need without a little bit of experimentation. You could use a USB-C dock if you really want a one cable solution, but compatibility can be finicky, especially for high res or high frame rate monitors. You would have much better success with a Thunderbolt hub, but Thunderbolt hubs are one, more expensive than USB Type-C hubs, and the devices that you connect to them may not support Thunderbolt or Thunderbolt speeds. 
And then there's things like desktop PCs with dedicated GPUs. These typically don't have a USB type C port. So it's not ideal for a full blown PC desk setup if you're trying to do something similar for yourself and using that. So yes, while USB type C is really cool, it's also not perfect. I do need a way though to tie all of my different accessories to these monitors since they're kind of the core of my setup. So I decided to use this, an Elgato Stream Deck Plus. All right, that probably makes no sense at all. But let me cook. The Stream Deck as a device itself is pretty cool. I talk about it too much in these desk setups, so I'm gonna summarize it real quick. What it does is it lets me set up shortcuts on each button and change the different icons on the display. But there's a nice USB type C hub that Elgato started selling for the Stream Deck Plus. This hub has USB A ports, USB C ports, and even SD and micro SD card slots built directly into it. Now I can just connect all my devices like SSDs, keyboards, mice, and SD cards while the Stream Deck itself is connected to the monitor, hiding the ports and cables behind it. But what about peripherals? I pair my keyboard, the Keychron Q1HE, using its USB receiver for a more stable wireless connection. And these also have magnetic switches and lets you change the actuation point, making it fully adjustable for my gaming and productivity needs. I swapped out the keycaps for a little bit more personalization. And for mice, I mainly use a Logitech MX Master 3 for productivity and YouTube work, but I do keep a Logitech G305 on the side for gaming. It's only been a few weeks, but this desk setup has been working out for me fine. And it ended up fitting perfectly into the rest of this room. Usually my days consist of me plugging in my MacBook to answer emails, take calls, review documents, and reviewing and editing YouTube videos. Once plugged in, everything pairs automatically. When I do want to adjust monitor settings, I can just adjust the BenQ monitor with DisplayPilot 2. Then at night, when I want a game, I swap the mouse, whip out a controller and swap the MacBook for the ROG Ally and I'm good to go. And everything else I wanna do is within arm's reach on this desk, but it's not perfect by any means. It's still a little impersonal, but not too many knickknacks. And the Samsung monitor just keeps on putting itself into game mode, which impacts the performance of the USB Type-C port. But sadly, the Samsung monitor requires a remote to adjust the brightness and settings. But overall, functionally, it works really well for what I was going for. I just wish I could have gotten it down to just one cable. I'd give it maybe an 8.5 out of 10 for now. I'm kind of tired of desk related content for now, so you won't be seeing this for a long time. But what do you personally think? Are you trying to accomplish something similar for yourself? What would you change? Have you tried making a single desk handle all of the things that you like to do? What's your ideal desk setup? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all next time. Bye.